Uh, right now we're uh, out and on the east coast of the island here in the town of St. John's, Mount Pearl, heading out towards Conception Bay. This being our second year of the program, we had a few changes in our program this year. We had been using the Friendship Center in St. John's as kind of not really a partnership, but a center where we could do our assessments for the clients in St. John's. Uh, that had a couple of different issues, getting the facility at the Friendship Center available to us, because it's very busy now. And so for us to kind of take time out of their day where we kind of have to have two or three days to do the assessments for all the clients out here, we decided we would come to their own homes. That makes it easier and now tomorrow we have one of our business partnerships at the Brighter Futures where we actually go right to their office to get as many clients in there at the same time because they all work out of that office. So today we're going to Conception Bay, so that's what we're going to be doing today, going to uh, Margaret's home and doing our assessment with her right there. In Nien de Luisi, Magli. My name is Margaret. I'm originally from Nokomak Village, Flat Bay, the west coast of Newfoundland, but living on the east coast, Conception Bay South. My goals have definitely changed onward and upward. Um, I've got some new goals set that I intend on reaching with the help. Both physical and mental health um, issues, are, uh, I, concerns I suppose are issues, but moving forward, yeah, definitely. Through my creative work. This is awkward. Okay. Finishing a pair of seal skin deer leather mittens with rabbit, of course. They're all hand sewn, made from many different animals. Animal of the sea, the land, rabbit, seal skin, and deer leather. Oh, I'm using, uh, it's actually a synthetic sinew. Uh, sinew generally comes from the intestines of an animal, moose or caribou, but it's hard to get. It's, it's hard to get, so we use a synthetic sinew. It's strong. It's very close to real sinew, actually. I'm not anxious, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. Um, there were some, some things that I wanna ask, things that I've not experienced yet that I'm looking forward to possibly being able to. Um, I've talked about Dodgy Gig uh, through the Native Friendship Center and I've, I'm so excited about what's been happening for me. And people are curious and we do need it. We need it, we sit in sharing circles. I hear what people have to say and I know that it could help them. Oh, there's that tape again. I think you should use my tape. <laughs> exactly, my tape, eh? right? <laughs> and why was I not thinking? I've eaten more junk this past week than I have the whole summer. I'm serious. Yep, but that's it, right? That's stress related. Typically when we're trying to focus on something is usually right when we want to invest that we fall apart. No kidding. It's like, gosh, I've been doing good right up till now and all of a sudden this last week I eat like a pig. It's like, oh, okay, it's true. Right. Yeah. I know. Come up to Berks a bit. Yeah, so what's like, the difference now, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I didn't find it was measuring blood pressure, people's blood pressure correctly. It wasn't. So I'm going right back to the old cuff, cuff and That's stethoscope. Cool it's a much more of a personal connection to it people is. than the machine. Yeah. And I know I never did like to abuse some machines because I don't find they work that well. But yeah. So you relax this arm now. Let me see okay. it from you. Perfect. That's what I'm wanting to do. Hold it, please. Thank you very much. How is it? 128 on 70. Is that good, Ben? That's good, yeah. Good. The top number is a little bit up, as we say, but I don't, yeah. I think that's better than you normally think, have gotten. Yeah. Right? As for where you stand, that's a beautiful blood pressure. Good. Right? Yeah. Homey nerves. <laughs> Homey nerves, yeah. <laughs> Next time I do this, I'm going to steal your restroom now, Margaret. Thank you. Okay, perfect. I'm alive. You are. Jesus. <laughs> Was my pulse good? Oh, your pulse is perfect. As, as, I, as I tell people, as I say, you want your heart rate to be as close to 60 beats a minute as you can. Mm -hmm. You will be low, it's even better. No. The next little thing I'm going to do is the, the thing you've been wonderfully waiting to do is I'm going to take three oh, measurements from you first. Right? Oh, okay. So the first one's a thigh. Oh, Lord. So as we say, I don't measure a thigh as they would ideally, right? Because for me, I'm not allowed of to. Of course. Right? The knee, to the hip, and I go halfway in between. Okay, does it have to be that one? No, well, that's the one I'm going with. That's the one you gave me. <laughs> I always do the right per the person's right leg, right? Okay. The next one I'm gonna do is to hit the same, right? <laughs> Here we go, Evan. Here we go. Lives are not bigger than last time. Well, oh, good. As I say, I don't mind hips being bigger as when everything else is bigger. 
I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Sylvia is going to have a problem. Now you're not doing that tight enough. No, I don't do it tight. That's why I don't do it that way, right? <laughs> no, no. I said I go till I get resist and that's it. I said, so yes, no, it's not a measurement that you're going to get if you're going to a seamstress to get what your size are. No, and actually even at the gym with yeah. trainers, they pull that pretty tight. Yeah, and that's the thing too, because it's not giving you an actual representation, because if I go and I pull as tight as you can and you got handles sticking over, guess what? Sorry, that's not what your measurement is. <laughs> yeah. Your measurement is there, right? I'm just saying in general for most people, all right? I know. So the next little thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop you on my scale now. This is the part that I This is the part that you really hate. love. Yeah. Your scale is always within four or five pounds of my scale. Yeah. But. Today we're perfect? Well, I don't know. I'm going to take it in on the bathroom floor because yes. we're on carpet. Yep. Are you good, Evan? I really understand my body. I do. Yeah. I really, and I know when there's a change. Just being really aware, but you're right. Muscle weighs more than fat. Yeah. So you can be up in your weight and your clothes can be looser. So Are you right change. or left-handed? Right, but I yeah. work a lot with my okay. left. Okay. I need to see your right bicep. <laughs> right there. There's not much to it. It's oh, that's okay. I just need to see it, as I say, because we use your dominant arm to check what your muscle mass Ooh, is. Oh, There's not much muscle your, mass left there your, now. Your body composition, as we say, right? So just one little bit. Oh, it's gone now. One little bit and uh, two little bits. Has Perfect. not been working out like I was. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Doing three separate little one-minute exercises. So, the first thing I'm going to have you do is for you to be relaxed and as calm as possible for 60 seconds as we test your stress response. So, starting now, go. Cool. So, starting now, go. Cool. you to do is uh, when I say say go I'm gonna get you to start at a hundred mm -hmm. and take away seven oh my god whatever answer you come up with take away seven and so on and so forth taking away seven I'm gonna get you to do that for 15 seconds when the 15 seconds are up I'm gonna tell you to relax you'll be relaxed and as calm as possible for the rest of the minute and stop thinking about those numbers sound good questions concerns <laughs> Oh, yeah, many concerns. Ah, no, seriously. Yeah. So you can say it out loud, work it out in your head, doesn't matter type thing. As I tell people, it's not necessary that you have to be right or wrong. It's just about getting you thinking about oh, a problem. Oh, no, it has to be right or wrong. I know, yeah. It gets you thinking uh -huh. about a problem you don't typically think about in your run of the daily basis. No. Something that causes a little bit of mental stress type thing. Right. And to see then how you recover afterwards. That's part three oh, thank then. God, I was wrong, wasn't I? No, the first one was good. The second <laughs> one was good too. All I heard was 93, 86, 79, so all those work, right? Oh, right on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can take your hand right on out of there now. I forgot to tell you that, I apologize. Be a test of leg, arm strength. Arm strength, the first one. Using just your arms, you're gonna lift up. As I tell people, I remind them they can. This is a dyno meter, yep. so it will not move as you pull against it. Okay, perfect. There's number one. The next one we're gonna do is a test of leg strength. So I'll show you Ooh. this one first before you do it. So we'll like stand on here, grab with your hands over the bar this time. Yeah. As I tell people here, you're gonna bend your knees mm -hmm. to try to sit on an imaginary chair behind okay. you. So you bend down. So what I don't want, as like I tell people, don't let your knees come out too far. Okay, you want don't overextend. No, exactly. Okay. You don't want them past the toes. You want to All bend right. your knees down. Put your hands over the bar this time. Strong yeah. to your core, lower back. As you look straight ahead, you use your legs. And I say bum muscles. Yeah. To try to lift up. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So bend the knees down a little more. There we go. Okay, perfect. There we go. Okay. And the last one, as I say, is the one that we're going to have over here, where I get you sitting down. Thank God my toenails are polished. 
nice and clean, as we say, right? Hold on, let's put that. Yeah. Looks nice. great. There we go. Okay, ready? Yeah. Okay, good. good. Excellent. So, that's our physical assessment done. Okay. Uh, as we say, the second part that we're going to do is our little questionnaire. Mm -hmm. Starting right here, as we I say. I have no glasses. Look at, the, look at the size of the printer. You'd need to Oh, well, that's, that's the thing that we talk about, right? We need to get a new one. Shelly got one bigger in her office, and I forgot to take hers. There's no right or wrong answers either. Yeah. It's just where we are right now on our road to wellness. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, my first question that I have for you is, how many times per week do you spend five minutes doing stretching exercises? Five or more, four, three, two, one, I do not stretch. I think it was fantastic. There was some affirmation for sure. Um, and I set some, some goals for myself for the next week at least, and uh, I intend on sticking with them. It's gonna affect how I do some of my work for sure. Yeah, it's kind of refocused me, which is a good thing, I needed it. I'm glad it happened today. Tomorrow we're in at our partnership at the Brighter Future Center. Oh, perfect. So there's eight ladies in that center that are part of the program, right? Roxanne Pottle from Brighter Futures in St. John's. About 25 years ago, a group of like-minded individuals in this area got together and decided to form a coalition. And that coalition basically is to provide um, services for families and young children under the age of six, all in the area of promoting healthy social and emotional and uh, physical development. Okay, it's a little bit of an interesting story, but, but a short one. One of our staff actually was born and raised in Flat Bay and her son is working with the Dodge Gay program out in the Flat Bay area. Veronica was at work one day and was explaining this wellness program to us. And we're all trying to pronounce the name and we were you know, having a bit of fun with it. Myself and Veronica were talking and we were just saying, well, wouldn't it be great if we could have something like that here? And she said, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna call Johnny you know, and see what Johnny has to say. I brought it to their attention. I knew that they were going to be uh, reaching out to different organizations and getting groups of people involved. And I thought it would be a great opportunity for for myself and my staff to be involved in this you know wonderful program which is helping so many people. Hi my name is Veronica Bennett and I am originally from St. Teresa's but I currently reside in Mount Pearl. I am a family resource coordinator also a healthy baby club coordinator. So we thought well you know let's just see how this goes for Veronica. So after a couple of months she um, you know, was telling us how much fun she was having and, you know, sh sh checking in. And we liked a lot of elements of it, and that it was supported medically, for one thing. And the other thing was that um, it wasn't a program that was just looking at a person's weight as an indicator of wellness. It had a lot of different components to it. Uh, we were noticing that Veronica's mindset was different. And with that mindset also came her willingness to share around what was happening, what was going on. So instead of, you know, being very negative about uh, some things that might have challenged her at the time, there was more of a positive slant on it. And also, she had a lot of different supports. So she had the support, uh, you know, the medical team, there was a coach who was checking in with her, and there were other people within that community who were supporting each other. So uh, then Stuart came in and then the rest is history. We all got involved and did our assessments and, and we were all quite pleased to, to be a part of the program. Not only have I sensed a change in myself, but in my coworkers as well. So there has been lots of changes being made. Yes, positive changes. Being aware, yeah, being aware and more conscious of the decisions when it comes to my health and, and my wellness. And I, I would have to say even though losing weight is a goal for most of us. Um, there are a lot of other goals that we've met besides just the weight loss. So that's been really promising for, for many of us here. So Brighter Futures was um, able to feel and believe that we could support uh, this program within our organization. And you know, the, 
it was presented to the board and the board were happy to you know go along with it so besides the usual conversations that happens um, you know everybody's checking with everybody all the time you know about what they're reading how they're doing twice a week we have uh, an extra half hour for two days a week where staff can either go for a walk and we try and bring it outside too instead of you know just staying in the office so staff go outside whether it's in the community or a park or somewhere else where an extra half hour is tacked on to a fitness component for them whatever that might be um, we purchased Fitbits as a gift for staff. Our director, Roxanne, bought us all Fitbits, so uh, we kind of have challenges with each other and things like that. Uh, we also, she's also given us an opportunity to, uh, for some extra physical activity by purchasing uh, different equipment in the office. There's always healthy snacks available for us here. And I was introduced to this uh, HIT high intensity interval training. I was, it's, yeah, so I was introduced to this and I really enjoy this. It's like a short form of exercise where there's a lot of a cardio and breaks in between and it only takes like 15 minutes to do and it's easy and I can fit it into my day, no problem. If you exercise, you eat well, you feel well, right? And I've noticed that in myself too, like mentally, physically, stronger, you know, spiritually. All of those things, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's a wonderful program. It, it you know, it makes people sit and think and, and probably make better choices and always be aware that awareness is there, that you know, that sometimes change does need to happen. I set my goals way too big in the beginning, way too big, and I realized that that's not gonna work for me. I need to set smaller goals, more attainable goals, more realistic goals. So yeah, so I find that in the beginning, I, I probably made it more challenging by setting bigger, larger goals, but now that I've set smaller ones, it's easier, yeah, it's easier to maintain. Term two, it was up and down, up and down. There were moments where things were extremely well, and then there were times when it kind of fell off the wagon, shall I say, a little. My ultimate goal was to lose weight I made some really positive changes as far as like healthy eating, exercise, drinking lots of water, and, and things like that. Uh, uh, but, you know, there were times when, uh, when life just gets tough and, you know, stress creeps in and then, you know, you kind of fall back a little bit and then, you know, then you pick yourself up and you, start again and then you know and do your best and that's all I've been doing is but as far as like overall health wise you know there's been major improvements I mean the lifestyle changes I've, I've really continued on with those things you know not eating so much takeout getting a little bit more physically active I actually joined a gym so <laughs> I try to get there as often as I can but the water drinking and things like that definitely more energy I feel like I may not have lost pounds but there are inches gone uh, definitely eating better, feeling better. Uh, I recently visited my doctor and had some blood work and things done and everything is, you know, great. No blood pressure issues, no cholesterol, no uh, sugar issues, anything. So everything's really good. I'm keeping things in check there, so. More so with Shelly, because she, she sends some, like, you know, she keeps in touch with through texts and stuff. And I find, you know, it's very encouraging, especially when you get that little text by surprise one day and then you realize, oh, yeah, you know, it's, there's encouragement there. And it's also a little reminder, you know, you feel reminded to get, you know, back on track where, you know, what this is all about, right? It's very, very helpful very helpful. I absolutely believe I would benefit more from face-to-face -face contact. The text is wonderful. It's a nice little reminder, a nice encouragement, but I think if I had someone that I could speak to and see face-to-face -face on a regular basis that it would be much more helpful. So one of the things that we had decided to do here, the board were very supportive of it as well, is that throughout the year we're always talking about, oh, we need to exercise more, we need to eat better, we need to lose weight, we need to do all of those things that you want to do for your health. But um, nobody was really doing it. So uh, you know, we're, all, we're all human. And unless you've got an initiative or unless you have a reason to do something, you know, we're not really going to do it. So our reason was, well, if we're all in it together, then we'll support each other. So what we really liked about it was that it was that larger group support. 
it wasn't just looking at weight loss, which was what you know our thinking was, we're all going to lose weight and be, be healthy because we've lost weight. Uh, this thinking switched more to be, we're going to be healthy and weight loss is a component of that. So there was, you know, those shifts in thinking created some other changes that we hadn't totally, totally expected. So for some of us, so some of us became more fit, but may not have lost a lot of weight, but we were more fit. Or uh, through some of the support that we were receiving, just opened up other avenues of, well, you know, yes, we will have Shelly check in with you every couple of weeks or so to see how you're doing. But then some suggestions from Shelly or maybe some other things that might have happened with Stuart have, you know, shifted us on to do other things. So that part of it was was really interesting. So the the I guess you could say the workplace component. Um, I I don't think it would have worked as well if Brighter Futures wasn't supporting the initiative. So you know I, I guess one of the things I would suggest is if this wellness initiative continues and it moves forward even in the corporate area and the workplace area that there has to be uh, you know 100 percent support from the employer for it because there are some times that you know when we're doing our assessments and Stuart comes here like we're freeing people up to to do the assessment during that day or even one of the things that Brighter Futures has done is we've said to anybody okay let's commit to to uh, days a week, a half an hour a day, add that to your day. So you leave a half hour early, or you put it with your lunch or whatever to do something active. We're not always picking ourselves up on that free time to do that. I mean, it's, it's given to us free. You would think we would be more, with, more committed to it, but uh, you know, work always takes precedence over some of that stuff. But it's, it's the reminder. So one of the things I've decided to do as the executive director is send reminders to everybody all the time. Did you use your, your, your two, two days this week to, to do something active? And uh, so those reminders just, and it, I gotta do it for myself as well. So it's not just everybody else, it's also for myself. We're not eating the same way we used to eat. <laughs> uh, who doesn't love a few sweets every now and then? There's, you know, a bit of joke. But, but so, you know, trying to rethink things. Along, okay, so we, we can still have treats, but you don't have to have a chocolate cake, or you don't have to have a bag of chips, or you don't have to have the junk food or whatever. So one of the things we're do, I'm doing now is making sure we have fresh fruit here in the office all the time. Um, we're also, you know, keeping a few things in the fridge. So, you know, if somebody's forgotten their lunch, well, you know, there's eggs there, there's fruit there. Uh, we'll, all of us from time to time, we'll bring in something that we've made and it's in the fridge so you could share it. Like it could be a healthy soup or it could be some, some recipe somebody tries. One of the other things that's uh, really helpful too is when we're having, um, if we're bringing in lunch for meetings and that sort of thing, it's always, it has to be healthy. It has to be a healthy lunch. Swiss chalet is a healthy lunch when you have salad instead of the fries. You know, so we will do things like that. I know it may not be available for everybody, but uh, whenever we're having a staff meeting, the same thing again. It used to be cookies, and it used to be, you know, um, chicken fingers and stuff like that. Now it's all shifted. Now we're bringing in, you know, tray of vegetables and the fruit and and different things like that. Maybe cheese and some nuts and that's so there's a visible difference when it comes to some of the stuff that we're doing ourselves, and um, we're just trying to give reminders to each other as well. You know, and. Nobody wants to uh, be in a position where me, we're going to be uh, too far behind the other person, you know. And this year, we're running a little competition within the office. And uh, uh, as we speak, we're involved in a challenge right now. <laughs> so we do little challenges. It'll be finished in June, and it is kind of like a weight loss. We're just really tracking our weight. We're all helping each other out to stay on track. And um, Brighter Futures will probably give a little bonus gift to uh, people at the end. And we, we're, this year we're doing it up until June only because we have two staff who, who are off for the summer and you know they'll miss out if, if we don't do it around that. So we try and be aware of that stuff. It's always in the conversation. We're always encouraging each other and, and setting little uh, challenges and, and things like that. But everybody's eating much healthier and talking about walking their dogs and, and, and going to the gym. Yeah, it's good. It helps. But I think more than anything from what we're, do, we're doing here is really, it's the whole awareness and the whole just total support all the way around. 
whether it's here in the office or whether it's uh, with Dodger Gig providing it. You know, Dodger Gig was sort of the catalyst, but everything else that spins off from that there is what we're doing here in the office. And then you take that home. So I think one of the things for, for me in particular, and I'm, not, and I'm pretty certain most everybody will say it who works here, is we're really starting to break some of our old habits. We all have the same issues and we all have the same needs. So I think that's there's more th common things, I feel, than differences when it comes to health and wellness. Uh, your, some of the resources you have available may not be as, as great in the rural areas, but there's always ways of working around those things. But I think the support, the overall support that's there, whether it's here urban or whether it's in the rural area that you get from Dodger Gig and each other, that's what makes the big difference. Everybody wants to be healthy and live a healthy lifestyle and, and healthy and happy and yeah, yeah. And I think people, not only indigenous people, but all people could benefit from this program. Oh my gosh, I would love it. I would absolutely love it if there was a center here, a place to go, more support. Yeah, it would be fabulous. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of mental health things we're talking about this term more than we were even in first year. And people talk about things more openly and honestly. We had a, one of the gentlemen had a big accident type thing before, just at the end of last term and he had been in a car accident and kind of got hurt and stuff and then he was very vocal on his Facebook account about how he was doing and how his emotions were and stuff and so from that he talked a lot about that and so as a man doing it I think other people did too because some of the other men in talking to me were more open about they weren't feeling as good or feeling a little down or not on not normal type thing, right, you know, for them. So that was other things too. So it was kind of I don't know if that was the catalyst, but it all seemed to kind of talk a bit there from there. I'm Stephen Bennett from Flat Bay, from Legs Lane. I played sports, hockey, pretty active, worked out six, seven days a week. Outdoors, loved outdoors, out in the woods, hunting, rabbit snaring food, feed the family, friends that I knew that wanted some, I shared everybody that I could. Like smelting, when I go smelting, I'll get it, like I like to have about two feeds a year and can, whatever I catch is, I give it to whoever wants. I learned that on my own because my parents split up when I was about six years old and I lived with my mother. She reared me out with three girls and I just, I guess it was into me because I found out how my mom side of the family, that's what they did from way back to my great-great-grandfather. So I guess that's where I got to enjoying the woods so much. Yeah, I spent six years in St. George's Fire Department when I was living in St. George's. I seen the fire that they had down in Basherbrook, uh, the forest fire they had, and after I seen that, I kind of thought, well, that would be really up my alley to get into that, and went to a few house fires, and when I got into the house, got a chance to go inside the house and see the fire, the doubt fire in the house. I really enjoyed it even more then. Yeah, I was in two of the fire fit challenge uh, competitions in Steenville. So we get, uh, I think it's a four man or a five man uh, team and we all take part into it. The first year I was into it, I was to carry the, the man down, uh, Randy. He's 175 pounds and I had to drag him, I think it was 150 feet to the finish line. And the second year I was on the hammer that we had to bang uh, the weight, to push the weight through in the second competition. We're rookies, so we did all right the first year. I ended up winning the fireman's suit for the rookie team that we had there. And the second year we had good fun of it. That was the best part of it. After that, I moved to Flat Bay, I ended up meeting up with Joan. And Joan really loves the outdoors with me, so we really got to do a lot of outdoor stuff and activities. Still work with the town of St. George's, and I ended up getting hurt when I slipped from the Samboni. So I was off of work for 24 months, and then I went back to work, and I was back to work for six and a half months, I think it was, and then I got into a head-on collision that ended up laying me up for the last year, well, the year, well, it's 13 months now, and. Uh, so I'm struggling now to get to back walking and everything else to trying to get back to a normal life if I can get one. We were out to watch the Jets play uh, Port of Bass and uh, Jets won in the, in the shootout. 
So we left the game and uh, Joan had asked if we wanted to stop for a Tim's and I said for some reason, I said nah I don't want a Tim's tonight and so we drove on and we got out of sight of Port of Bass about 11, 12 kilometers and uh, a truck will come and swerve, there was a vehicle in front of us and when the vehicle cut away, all of a sudden all we could see was two headlights and a truck coming at us so all I can do was screech and said there was a truck coming at us and then bang it was over and then when I the next thing I remember is me coming to trying to open my side door because I was a passenger and I couldn't get my door open so then I started pushing Joan out through her door I don't know how I got off my seatbelt still to this day so I climbed over the council and over Jonah's seat and when I got to the ground got outdoors to the ground I stayed on the ground I didn't know why I couldn't get up, but then afterwards I found out that I had, I had a open book pelvis um, and I had my uh, ribs all broke on my uh, right side and I had a frail chest and I had a dislocated ankle and uh, my bladder was torn. I found out this all afterwards once I get in the hospital and stabilized me in St. John's. Um, I was in Cornerbrook for two days. They had to do... Uh, put a steel uh, pins into my hips and put a flexator across me to keep me stabilized so I wasn't, my pelvis and that wasn't open and uh, flopping around to get me to St. John's and they had to cut me here to put a tube in because I had a nemotorax, my lung had to collapse, partly collapse, so they had to put that in so I could fly, they flew me to St. John's and then when I got in St. John's, I was in St. John's, I, f I don't know how many hours, and then I had to go underneath surgery. And I think the surgery probably was about six hours or something when they put me back together. I woke up, I was in a room, the nurse was next to me and there was a couple other patients or something. I was in a recovery room. I didn't know really where I was to. I was kind of in and out of it. I wasn't sure where I was to. And when I got up in my main room at nine, they had a nurse had to sit outside of my door and watch me for 24 hours. And I can remember talking to him and him trying to keep me calm and telling me that he was there just to make sure everything went right. Joan was over in the hostel staying and because uh, she wouldn't, nobody was allowed in the room with me. And then the next day she come up and Joan was in the room with me just about every day that she could be. And uh, she, never brought, she never left my side too often. She'd go down in the nights and sleep and then most of the first two weeks they had a like a little cot in the room so she could sleep next to me to because I was kind of nervous to be alone I was still the anxiety was still kicking in and uh, I couldn't move or nothing Joan had to brush my teeth between her and the nurses they had to wash me they had to feed me ten and a half weeks I spent in St. John's and what got me to come home I was supposed to go to Cornerbrook to the hospital for another six weeks but I ended up getting up on one leg they wanted me to stand up and then they wanted me to use the walker so when I went out on the hallway I ended up wanting to go from push myself farther than what they wanted me to push but when I got halfway they made me sit in the wheelchair the first day so I, just because they said no that was far enough so I sit in the wheelchair for about five ten minutes then they let me get up and go far as the nurse's desk so I did that, and then they wheeled me back in the room. The second day, they come in, they asked me to go for a walk with the walker again, because I was only allowed to use one leg, because I had to stay off of my left leg for three months. That was June the 22nd, I was allowed back on my leg. I asked them, I said, well, I said, this time if I go for a walk, can I walk as far as I want? And they said, okay, but if you feel weak or tired, we want you to sit down and stop. I said, okay, not a problem. So I ended up the second day going 120 feet, 125 feet on one leg with the walker, hopping down. So then they looked at me and said, well, we got to reevaluate you. And I said, what is that? She had asked me because they knew my mom's place had no stairs or anything to get into. I just go through the back door and it was all flat inside the house. And uh, so they reevaluate it and then they come back. That was on a Friday. And then they come back on a Monday and told me that instead of me going to Cornerbrook for six weeks in the hospital that I could go home and stay to my mom's for the six weeks and then I had to go back to St. John's to see the specialists and to find out if I could do physio because they had to make sure the screws and the plates and that wasn't moving or anything 
before I was allowed to do physio. Joan is still off work, and Joan got a lot of uh, muscle uh, damage done. She had no broken bones, but she, she had muscles, and that is a lot of damage. Every day, yeah, God love her. She, uh, she supported me right through, even still to this day. She right to my side, cooking my meals, doing my showers. I can't get in the shower unless I get, I get the bench in there. So even when I was in there, she used to bat me because I couldn't bat myself in the hospital. And when I first come home, she used to come out to mom's and give me a wash with the pan in the bed because I couldn't get in the shower or nothing. Never was a person to depend on anybody. And it kind of changes your life. I'm dealing with uh, PTSD and my way to deal with that, I'm trying to face my fears and to me, putting this all out so everybody else can see it, I'm putting it out so I can see it too, trying to give myself a smack in the face that this is what happened to me, don't be scared of it, like try to, oh, I'm trying to overcome it. So I don't know if it's working, but as I, if I look, keeps looking at my pictures and seeing where I, where I was too, to what I am today, trying to motivate myself to, well, push yourself a little bit more. Next week, you'll see another improvement. That's what my goal is, trying to put everybody else see it and what keep flashing into my face. Because if I try to ball it up and hide it, I'll be fighting it, not letting it out. But if I let it out, I'm hoping that I'm letting out the monster out of me instead of keeping the monster built up inside of me. My new goals is trying to get walking again. I'm suffering pain every day and every night. I do physio three days a week, so I end up being on the treadmill. I get to walk on the treadmill 15 minutes. I does the bike for 10 minutes. I uh, does exercises, um, lifting a bit of weights, and uh, I've seen a little bit of improvement. The only thing is with my assessment this time around that I can't do the physical part of the assessment because I can't get down on the floor and pull on the strength part, so I got no records of being on the strength part. With my blood pressure this time, my blood pressure is just about perfect, right on the knot, and my heart rate is perfect. That was up before, my blood pressure was up before, everything now was perfect. My goals going in Therm Tree this time is I want to get back on the floor, get my strength back. I want to drop the cane. I want to be able to walk without using my cane now. My other goals are to see Shelly and help with some of the problems that I got with the PTSD I got and uh, things that I'm facing. And with Stuart to give me some more advice on my healthy things. They give you like your healthy eating wise and this and that. Go over what I'm eating now and just make sure it's I'm doing the right thing where I can't do so much exercise. So the more healthier food I can eat, I can drop weight without doing the exercise. It felt great this time to walk up and get it. Uh, I didn't go to the first one because I was working. This is the first one that I attended and walking up and walking in and seeing everybody made me feel really good because I seen a lot of people get goals and drop a lot of weight. And when they call up my name and like everybody started to clap and started to cheer, I really brought me up even more because everybody knew what I went through to see me walk up to get my certificate just the feeling of the cheers and that kind of brought tears to my eyes but made me feel you know more than me wanting this the full group that was there that night I could tell like 
wants to see me do more improvement. And I think a lot of them follow me on Facebook too. So that's why I'm putting a lot of it up too. Show them my results. Because when I first got Max, and like I had a lot of comments that I got to read afterwards. Like I probably, probably six months afterwards, I started going down through it and couldn't believe how many people that was out there. And it really touched me, big time. Mm -hmm.